All right, everyone, welcome back for another episode of Carnival Trades. Today is Tuesday, February 7, 2023. If you've not done so already, please give the video a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Come find me on CarnivalTrades.com for swing trading alerts and analysis. Uh, anyways, um, still no internet at the house. So uh, kind of doing this video here uh, from my car, I did find a way to kind of um, get some type of a video out for you guys uh, other than um, doing the, the vlog style yesterday. Um, the sound is not going to be that good, um, and you might charts might be a little slow here, so bear with me. Um, but uh, I do want to get something out here, as we've got a lot to talk about today. Um, as Powell uh, was on the microphone, and you know he really didn't say anything different than what he said yesterday, but this was one of the more volatile days you're going to find out here. Take a look at the spiders intraday. Um, you know, really just started out flat as you'd expect, uh, not a whole lot going on. Then we basically popped, well, we had a little micro dip there, and then we popped about five, you know, yeah, five handles, almost six handles in 20 minutes. In 20 minutes. Then we dropped seven handles, um, or, you know, six handles, whatever, fifth, four, fifteen, yeah, seven handles, um, in, you know, the next 40, 40 to 50 minutes. And then we went from 407 all the way up to 416 so nine handles in the last oh you know 90 to you know 120 minutes of the day so lots of volatility and, and the crazy part is it's not like it's not like powell said something different he basically reiterated what he said last um last friday or uh thursday um it, quote unquote the disinflationary process has started however there may be more work to do he kind of just said the same thing so it was very interesting to see the market go up and down like that um this was probably one of the more volatile days swing wise that we've seen really all in the last year uh, but bottom line is i think right now we're probably looking to go up to this gap so four four twenty two um on the daily that never got filled there's a lot of supply up there um, you know, maybe even a little bit higher. There's another gap just up in this area, but this is where all the bags are trapped. Um, anybody who bought in August, you guys remember how the euphoria was back then, and it's, you know, getting kind of similar here. Um, but you can see the price action today. It just shows you that the bears are probably a little too eager um, because we got a big dump and that was bought pretty quickly. So everybody's just trying to short here. Um, and so that tells us that we're not quite there yet um, as far as uh, getting everybody on board to the long side or at least stopping out all the bears so yeah that's really where we're at here um i will say there was a you know it's i would say it's a minor crack in the armor so far um is the russell the russell is definitely a little bit on the weaker side today i'd prefer to see the russell leading um and it really wasn't all day long it's i think the russell you know maybe this has another nominal high in it but i don't see a, a ton more upside in this right now but overall, I can't really say a ton of bad things about the market, at least in the short term. Um, the triple Q's held up decently well, um, up 2% on the day. And, you know, you're seeing strength from, you know, names like uh, Meta, Tesla's holding up well, Apple had a decent day here. Um, so, and the semiconductors were holding up well. So um, I can't really say too, too many bad things. However, the big picture, and this is a big one. So right now, I believe that the reason this market is... Uh, okay, so the bears right now, the, the bear thesis right now is uh, we're headed to recession and the Fed's not going to be able to print us out of it. That's the bear, that's the bear thesis. That was, that's was that been the bear thesis for a long time, and it's been a valid point. Um, the problem is the bears are kind of getting squeezed up here. Now, here's my thesis, and I'm going to say this because you're not going to find this on mainstream financial media, but I'm going to talk about it again. Two year. The two-year treasury. What did Jerome Powell say today? He said the disinflationary process has started. This right here is calling bullshit on his entire at his entire speech here. And excuse the language, but that's what it is. Um, this is a breakdown. He, I told you guys yesterday, he needed to save this. That did not happen. Why is this important? Because the Fed needs to get the Fed funds rate in line with the two-year treasury note yield. Now, it's basically in line right now, but this is a breakdown. Meaning, if we go back to the lows, the Fed has more work to do as far as hiking rates, which means inflation has not peaked. So, let me repeat that. We'll get a second peak in inflation and possibly even a third peak down the line. Um, if you look at the 70s, that's basically what happened. We had one peak, um, and then it kind of came back in. Everybody thought it was over, and we got another peak. We have CPI coming up next week. So maybe that's something here. Um, the two-year, you know, maybe I could be wrong. I certainly can be wrong. 
anything can fail here, but the bond market is smarter than the stock market, and it's always going to be ahead of time. Speaking of the bond market, let's get over to the 30-year here um, uh, via ZB. This is a fail pattern. So remember, guys, I told you I had a buy signal on the ZB. That's failed now. You, so we close below that green bar low. So even the 30-year, you know, what, what do you want to own during a recession? The 30-year, right? That That's everybody, that's finance 101. 30 years coming down. And we had a hot jobs number Friday. Guys, the signs are pointing here that we're not going to recession now. Or if it is, it's going to be a stagflationary recession, which is basically the boogeyman. Um, and the market's not pricing this in right now. The market is completely oblivious. Uh, the bond market isn't, but the stock market uh, is is oblivious. Or, uh, yeah, stock market is oblivious, excuse me. But you see the 10-year there, same thing as well, um, falling. So um, that is the concern right now. I don't think... Uh, you know, I don't think inflation has peaked here, and I think the bond market is telling us that. Um, however, short term, market's holding up okay. Uh, you can't really say anything wrong. Um, and again, I think today's evidence that, you know, there's just too many people looking to short. Um, and that's really uh, that's really the long and short of it, essentially, no pun intended. You can see where we went down today. Uh, I told you you got to defend the 408 handle. We pierced it, got down to 407.57. It held, and then look where we went. Um, let's look on an intraday here so we can get a better look. Uh, right down here, right, right up to that rising wedge trend line, right back down, pierced it, and now we just closed just back above it. Either way, spiders are holding up. We'll give them the benefit of the doubt. We'll give them the upside bias for now. Um, but next week, I would get kind of careful. Um, I do think this market does want to linger around uh, possibly for another week or so, but don't be surprised if that CPI number comes in hot. That's what the bond market is, is kind of suggesting here. So... Um, in any case, for now, market is okay. Um, and again, we'll give it the upside bias until we get a sell signal, you get a high volume reversal, then all bets are off. Anyways, over to the SMH here. Semiconductors up 3% on the day, so they're still continuing to climb. Um, and yeah, we got above resistance here. So as long as the semis are holding up, nothing to say that uh, this market can't go higher, specifically tech. Um, really, your kind of next major level is right up into this 260 area. Uh, that would probably kind of coincide with the uh, 422 area there on the spider. So we'll watch for that uh, possibly maybe later this week or next week. IGV, um, they had a pretty, st a little bit uh, steeper of a pullback than a lot of things, but again, popping off the lows up 2.32% on the day. Um, I still see a lot of resistance up here in this 300, maybe 302, or 30, um, what's the official gap here, 303. So somewhere in that area, that gap may need to get filled. And the closer we get to these gaps, you know, specifically like this one on the spiders at 422 and change, you know, they, they kind of act like a magnet. So, you know, I do think we get up there, but either way, that's the level there for the IGV. The transport's still just an inside day. Um, so again, this is still holding up. Okay. You could technically make a case. It's a, it's a immature bull flag at this point. The 20 moving average is still, you know, you're still price is still pretty extended from that. Um, you don't want to see it lose this green bar low here at 15161. Um, if that happens and we go back down to that breakout level there at about 14.6, but DJT is holding up for now, so we'll respect it for the time being. Um, already talked about rates there. You guys know the drill. Um, continue to watch that two year. Um, but yeah, let's get over to, so home builders again, pulling back, um, but actually finished up half a percent here. They were a little bit on the weaker side, so maybe a little bit more rotation coming out. Uh, we talked about that, I think, the other day. It's a little bit more money kind of going into tech out of kind of like energy a little bit. Uh, but home builders, again, kind of off the, uh, you know, a little bit of a laggard here. Um, up 1% there on the ITB there. But, you know, they're hanging in there just like everything else. Uh, VNQ was down a little bit. So, again, down in an up tape. This was week one. Um, this might have topped all, uh, as well. Um, I think the Russell and kind of like the VNQ are both kind of names that, definitely showing a little bit of relative weakness. So if we do get another leg up, um, I wouldn't expect much more than a nominal high, maybe even a lower high, but VNQ on the weaker side, it did hold that 200 day, uh, 200 day moving average for what it's worth. Uh, XLF, this continues to be weak to me. It was up 1.15% today. I had a nice move um, and into this, you know, got into this upper trend line here. I told you guys 37 was kind of my target. That has hit. It could go a little bit higher. As you can see, we did um, come up here and kind of consolidate a little bit. And that that 37 level was my target basically like back in this area before we had moved up and consolidated. So I couldn't rule out another little bit of a, a push here. But even with the nice uh, outside candle today, XLF's still lagging, right? Like, I mean, you're barely, you just barely closed above this pivot high on the XLF. 
And if we just look at the spiders, um, there you go. So there's your pivot there. That was closed above basically last week. So again, still a little bit of laggard ship there from XLF. We'll definitely keep that on the radar moving forward. XPD, um, nothing really to, to say here, just up move, kind of just an inside pattern. So, you know, we'll give this one the upside bias for now as well. Over to energy here. So let's look at crude. Um, if I can get my crude chart up. Again, just try to bear with me here. Okay, so crude getting a nice bid um, off the lows. It's interesting. Again, you still have kind of a macro uh, sort of bear pattern here on crude futures. Um, sorry about that. There we go. Again, Wi-Fi, cafe Wi-Fi here. So <laughs> sorry about that. Anyways, um, so macro bear pattern with the... Uh, that weekly bear flag but for right now getting a bid off that lower trend line we'll see what it does here still have a neutral bear bias on it uh until proven otherwise xle um again we talked about kind of the rotation coming out but it got a nice bid today and these are holding up well up 3.2 five percent on the day so three and a quarter nice gain there for the xle um, xop here same thing up four percent Again, energy is still holding up well despite the recent little sell. And maybe crude can be, maybe energy would be a little bit of a fake out here. You know, if we do get that kind of hot CPI, um, or I would say like we should continue to watch energy here very closely, especially crude. Um, if this starts to really uptick uh, ahead of next week, it could be kind of confirming what the two years are saying. So something to watch here. Uh, but in any case, OIH um, still kind of just inside of this range here. Nothing really too new, it's just consolidating. Nat gas getting a nice bid. Um, that is nicely off the lows. The one thing I'm kind of looking for, though, uh, for Natty, and again, apologize for the delay here. This is uh, just doing the best I can here. But, um, yeah, nice volume on Natty. What I'm going to look for here is the four-hour. Again, trying to get this to go here. Hold on one second. Bear with me, guys. Okay, four hour. So we're looking at that four hour 50 MA. That's been resistance really since the peak back when it was at like seven bucks. Um, we just pierced above it a couple of times here um, last month, but we never really confirmed above it. Once you get a, a, an up move and kind of a back test or just a confirmation like several candles above that, um, that's where the bottom will be in Natty. Uh, but for right now, it is, you know, it's hanging in there. It's got a nice bit off the lows. We'll see if it can build off that and put in a constructive candle. All right, dollar index. So we talked about this yesterday. I said it's going up into the 50 MA, but it's kind of minor. And we basically got a minor type of reaction. So a one, two, three up into the 50 MA. And then this is a bullish candle. So inside hammer, that's what you want to see um, after a reversal, after a big up move. So if this can consolidate sideways, possibly, I don't know, for another week, maybe into the CPI next Thursday, you could bull flag and put it in a base there. I do like the dollar here. You guys know that. I think it has bottomed. And again, um, yields up is going to push the dollar up. So we'll watch that correlation here. That may be trying to tell us something here. Um, gold, basically an inside day. This might want a bear flag here. So we'll watch that as well. Uh, silver, also on the weaker side. And, you know, silver really starting to break down here. Um, again, I'll probably have some support at that. You know, we don't have support at the 22 handle, and then you got that 100 moving average just below it. Um, I would not be a buyer here, though, because this is a bull bit. You know, this was a technically a bullish inside bar that failed. So you're going to have a lot of velocity to the downside here. I would not be a buyer of silver until it's really starting to shake out, you know, shaking out a little bit more. Um, but again, we will be buying this again. We just got to get more of a pullback, let this uh, pattern kind of develop more platinum. Um, just hanging in there right now. I wouldn't touch this either. That probably wants to go to 950. And then copper here. Um, copper. I told you guys um, last week and, and really the last couple of weeks, I said once we got this sell signal, um, it's going to go to $4.395. We went to 4 We got a bounce. We'll see if it gets down into this area, you know, 385 390 um, somewhere in that area. But uh, nice little... Sell so there on spot copper Bitcoin. Lastly, um, so Bitcoin is interesting. Did not doing a whole lot yesterday, but still holding this bullish structure um, and a nice outside candle today up 1%. Again, um, this might want to get up a little bit higher than 25K now because we've done a little bit of consolidating here, um, but I'll still give this one the upside bias as well. In addition to the market, as long as we, um, you know, as long as the market holds up, I think Bitcoin will hold up uh, as well. But again, 
that two year guys don't ignore the bond market i've told you guys this in the past and that has worked every single time so again bond market is smarter than the stock market and uh we kind of pay attention to that anyways um yeah, give the market the upside bias here. Unless we get a high volume reversal. Uh, but I do think we want to go up there and touch that gap. We'll see what we get uh, tomorrow and into next week. Anyway, guys, uh, hopefully I can get my normal setup finally. Um, it's a little frustrating, but, uh, you know, we're trying to make it work here. I want to get the videos out for you guys. And I appreciate you guys bearing with me through all of this. Again, hopefully we can get uh, back to normal tomorrow. Anyways, guys, we'll wrap it up here. You guys take care. Come find me at CanoverTrades.com. Talk to you all tomorrow.